Axelaf by Harold Faltermeyer, or as many of you will know it, the theme to the 1980s blockbuster movie Beverly Hills Cop. Get ready for a blast from the 80s. Lindrum sounds, a tom fill, delay, some homemade gated reverb, and a kick drum with a twist. Hello everyone, this is... In an interview, Faltermeyer said he used the Lindrum for the kick and snare, which suggests that the other sounds come from somewhere else. But to be honest, we found the Lindrum LM2 samples from Gold Baby's tape drum machine collection to be a very close match for the entire drum track. Lindrum kick, snare, low, mid and high tom, clap, kabasa, and closed hat. Set the tempo to 117 BPM. Let's start with the kabasa, which is this thing. But any gritty shaker sound will probably also do. It's played throughout the whole song on every 16th note. But that doesn't sound right yet. That monotonous rapid fire would get on your nerves real quick. All steps currently have the default velocity of 100. So let's lower every other step to about 50. That already sounds so much better. Now it's always loud, soft, loud, soft and so on. This goes on for 3 bars and then there's a small variation. So let's extend the pattern to 4 bars or 64 steps. When doing it this way, the pattern is automatically unrolled and we don't have to program every page over and over again. On page 4, we remove the accent from the first step while these get accented. I'll mute the kabasa for now, so we can focus on the hi-hats. First let's take care of the hi-hat sound. It has this hollow bell-like tone to it. That's a little too obnoxious. Fortunately, we can simply use the bass low-cut filter on the second filter page to get rid of those frequencies. What we are left with is the hissy part of the hi-hat. Let's reduce the hold and decay of the sample, so that the hi-hat is short and snappy. The hi-hat pattern itself is very interesting, because it contains three different accent levels. As far as I'm aware, the Lindrum only had two accent levels, so we can only guess what studio trickery was involved. In our case, we simply need to plan ahead a little. The underlying rhythm is the same as the kabasa, loud, soft, loud, soft, but we need to leave some room for an even higher third accent level. So I'd suggest a velocity of 80 and 50. Let's copy those two across the whole page. And while we're at it, let's also copy this page to all other pages. Now we can place the third accent level by assigning steps a velocity of 127. As always, if you need an easy to read overview of all patterns, you can check out our transcriptions on Patreon. Now to put the two parts together. Pan the kabasa all the way to the right and the closed hat all the way to the left. The hard panning works really well here because the two elements are so similar. It creates a very nice stereo effect. That's the first pattern of the song. Let's duplicate it and add more elements. The clap part isn't complicated at all. First step on page 1, last 3 steps on page 2, first step on page 3 and a slightly more elaborate ending on page 4. But something very important is still missing. 
And that's the delay effect. In addition to the raw clap sound, you hear a few prominent repeats after it. One every sixteenth note. On the digitac delay, you have this unintuitive time setting where 8 corresponds to a sixteenth note. But if you go to the maximum setting and you press down the encoder while turning, you can actually jump straight to note values. In case you use a delay that has a millisecond setting, set it to 128 milliseconds. Set the feedback so that you can still hear 5 to 6 repeats after the original signal. No ping pong delay, just keep it centered. I'll use the low pass filter on the delay to make the repeats a little less bright. In the original, this is actually a double tap delay, with the first tap after a 16th note and the second tap after an 8th note. So, instead of a single repeat that gets quieter every time, you get two repeats at the same level, which then decline together. You can hear it pretty well at the end of the original recording, when the clap plays solo for a final time. The kick pattern in Axel F is quite special, because it doesn't drive the beat. It's pretty much as far away from 4 to the floor as it gets. Instead, the kick drum supports the rhythm of the bass synthesizer. Have a listen. Pay attention to how the kick accentuates the bass melody. And we're done with the second pattern. Let's make a copy of it and continue. After two patterns of build-up, things will get busier now. So, let's first make some room and remove the claps from the second and third page. The beat now needs some kind of backbone, a steady pulse to give it some drive. We already know the kick isn't up for the job, so we need someone else to do it. And that would be the snare. Put it on the 2 and 4 across the whole pattern. That works pretty well up until the third and fourth bar of the pattern. The kicks and snares don't stack well here, so the kick has to go. What the snare needs now is a good dash of reverb. But not just any reverb. We want 80s gated reverb. A gated reverb doesn't decay naturally. It's cut off abruptly after a short time. The Digitact reverb isn't designed to do that, so we have to improvise. The Digitact has the ability to internally sample its own audio output. This means we can make a recording of the snare as we hear it right now, including the reverb that's on top of it. Let's assign that to our snare track. And also remove the reverb effect from that track or else we would have two reverbs on there. Now that we have a snare sample with a reverb baked into it, we can use the hold and decay settings on the amplitude page to cut off the end of the sample. It's a fake gated reverb. And with that, the third pattern is also done. But we need to make one more copy. Because, as was custom for the 80s, this song contains a tom fill. The Digitact has 8 sample tracks in total. And while in theory, we would have enough tracks left for a low, mid and high tom, they're never actually played at the same time. So, instead of 3 tracks, we can just use one. And parameter lock the high, mid and low tom samples to the corresponding steps. With this technique, each step can have a different sample. And that's it. These are all the patterns used in the song. You can easily add some variation by selectively muting the hand claps every once in a while. And why don't you try Faltermeyer's trick for yourself and accent your bass lines with the kick drum?
ਨੇ